Hi, I'm Seben Yakov. This presentation is entitled Frequency Aliasing in Analog Control, PWM Converters, and Intuitive Explanation. So what is frequency aliasing? We know from high school trigonometry that if you multiply two sinusoidal uh, functions, you get a cosine in this case, in which the argument now is the difference and sum of the original argument in the sinusoidal waveform. Now if we have two frequencies, F1 and F2, and we multiply the two signals of these frequencies, then we are going to get, in this case, a cosine and a cosine with a frequency, which is the difference between F1 and F2 and F1 plus F2. So this is the aliasing. These are extra frequencies that are being produced by the nonlinear operation of the product of these two sinusoidal signals. So let's have a look now in the time domain. How does this look? If we have a one kilohertz, three and a half kilohertz signal, we multiply them. This is the multiplication. And then if I look at the uh, spectrum, this is the FFT of these signals. I see here one kilohertz. This is the three and a half kilohertz. The product here, now we have two signals. One is 4.5, the sum of the frequencies and the difference of the frequencies, 2.5 kilohertz. When we are sampling a signal, like here we have a three kilohertz signal that we are sampling it at the rate of 100 kilohertz. This process is in fact multiplication. That is, we multiply this signal by this signal to get the sampling signal. And in this case, therefore, we're going to have the same phenomena as we have seen before. So let's have a look at here. Here is the sampling signal, the 100 kilohertz. This is the sampled signal, three kilohertz. And here is the product. This is the sampled signal. And here now we can see this is the spectrum of the 100 kilohertz. Obviously, in this case, it's not a single frequency. We're going to have all the harmonics here. This is the 100 kilohertz. Then we have two, three, etc. These are the harmonics of this 100 kilohertz. Three kilohertz, we have one peak here. That's a three kilohertz. And when we multiply this by this, this is a sampling process, we get a spectrum, we get the baseband back at, at three kilohertz, but then we have this aliasing here that I don't have it zoomed, but here we see that there's a spread here because we have the plus minus signals around these sampling uh, harmonics, the harmonics of the uh, sampling signal. What happens, however, if the sample signal is the high frequency in violation, in fact, of the Nyquist sampling theorem, which says that in order to restore a signal, you have to sample it, or the bandwidth of the signal should be less than half the sampling frequency. Now here we have a signal which is 101 kilohertz, while the sampling is 100 kilohertz, so therefore, we are violating the Nyquist sampling theorem, but nonetheless, we're going to have a signal, which is the difference between these frequencies, which is one kilohertz. So here we can see it. We have the 100 kilohertz. This is the sampling signal. Here we have the signal which we are sampling. And here we have the spectrum of the sampled signal. Here we have the high frequency component. There is some spread here, of course. And also we are going to have the one kilohertz, which is the difference between the two. So this is called folding of the frequency. That is, we are now sort of folding back and getting a frequency within the baseband here at the low frequency. So this is also, of course, very well known. And in fact, it's a problem in the case of a digital controlled PWM system in which we are sampling, say, the output, for example, and then uh, with an A to D getting the numerical or digital value, then we have a compensator here, then a modulator driver. Now, in order to avoid the problem of folding, uh, we do need an anti-aliasing filter, which will eliminate the high frequency component so that after sampling, we are not going to get the low frequency folding. So this is, of course, very well known. Less known is the fact 
that the aliasing phenomena also prevailed in analog control PWM converters. Now, to understand it, let's just have a look at this uh, synchronous uh, buck converter. We have a buck converter. Here is the DC. Well, now suppose we have an AC component, a disturbance on this AC. And now this process of switching is in fact sampling the V in. So this is a sampling process and therefore we are sort of multiplying the PWM signal times this voltage here. And obviously we're going to have all this aliasing and folding effect. So this is in fact the objective of this presentation to look at this phenomenon. The injection of a disturbance from the input to the output is normally referred to as audio susceptibility. This comes from audio systems and actually penetrated into PWM converter. So what we mean by that is that if you have a disturbance at the input of a PWM system and then you have some output which is related or due to this disturbance, then this ratio is called the audio susceptibility gain. Now, when dealing with this, usually you assume that this is a linear system, small signal system, and of course it has nothing to do what we, what we are talking about, which is a non-linear system, product, aliasing, so this is not relevant to what we are talking about. What we are talking about is the fact that if you are switching here these uh, two transistors, at the midpoint here, you're going to see the input plus the disturbance. So therefore, we are going to have the spectrum here is the sampling. We have the sampling and then we have the V in. V in. And obviously, due to this uh, product that we are now generating, this uh, uh, PWM times the uh, input, we're going to have a component which is, uh, could be at the lower frequency depending on the disturbance. So aliasing will cause folding of high frequency signals, here, high frequency signals beyond the switching frequency into uh, the band, uh, the low frequency band. The issue of aliasing in PWM power converter was investigated in the past in a number of papers. I'm showing here one paper and they're considering the case in which you have a disturbance here and also a disturbance here, here it is, and then the multiplication of uh, the switching and these disturbances are of course uh, causing aliasing. I'm talking about the simplest case in which you just have a converter and then you have a disturbance noise on the DC and due to the switching here you get actually aliasing and of course you can have folding and depending on the nature of this disturbance. So to, in order to investigate this I've set up uh, two models. One is a closed loop. Here we have a controller. This is a buck controller. Uh, this is the power stage. This is the filter, the load and the feedback coming in and here is the disturbance. And then I've duplicated the power stage and I'm driving it with the uh, PWM signal, which is exactly like the signal here, same frequency. It's about uh, 98 uh, kilohertz, uh, the steady state frequency here. And with the same duty cycle to produce about the same output voltage. So this is an open loop case with the same frequency, same sampling you might say, and here is a closed loop situation. So let's have a look first of all what happens when there is no disturbance, not here and not uh, here. This is the disturbance within this uh, source. This is a composed source of DC, 25 DC. And in this case, it's zero volt, uh, the amplitude. And here is the spectrum. What we see here is very typical. This is the uh, spectrum of the sampling, you might say the PWM, we have the 100 kilohertz, about 100 kilohertz, and then we have the higher harmonics, uh, 200, 300, etc. And so this is just the sampling of DC. Now let's inject here a AC signal, a noise signal, you might say interference, and in order to get the effect, um, it's 
pretty high, that's 3 volt as compared to 25, that's a fairly high voltage, just to see the effect. And this is now 1 kilohertz, so it's a low frequency. Same thing goes from, for here, this is the open loop, this is the closed loop, and here is what we get. For the open loop, we see the 1 kilohertz, that's, that's it, this is after sampling, okay? This is the output. We look at, at the output here, and we look at the output here. I didn't say that earlier. So the uh, blue one is the open loop, and the green one is the closed loop. So this is a one kilohertz injected. By the way, the reason why this is wide is because the number of cycles that I have in the window are fairly small because it's a low frequency, and therefore the peak is not very sharp. It's just a matter of the FFT uh, algorithm and what we see here in fact is that in the open loop we have the high value here while in closed loop we, it's much lower than that and this is in fact the effect of the audio susceptibility the reduction of the interference due to the feedback that is if we have a signal here which penetrates into the system then due to the feedback, which is comparing, of course, the output to a fixed DC voltage, then there will be attenuation of this disturbance. This is the classical audio susceptibility uh, model, and therefore we can calculate it. Uh, it'll attenuate. So this is the attenuation due to the feedback, which kind of makes sense, and that's the way it works. These are the high frequency components. Now, Let's put here a 101 kilohertz, that is a higher frequency, uh, in this case, than the 98 kilohertz, which is the sampling frequency, again at 3 volt, uh, both for the closed loop and the open loop. So the disturbance is 101 kilohertz. Now what we see here now is the folding effect. We see, first of all, in the open loop already the, the one, it's about uh, 2 kilohertz because 98 and uh, 101, so it's about 2, 3 kilohertz. This is the disturbance. So this is in open loop. Of course, we see here some of the sideband, the aliasing here, the, the sideband uh, due to the modulation of the 100 kilohertz and the uh, disturbance. And also, we're going to see it here in the closed loop. It's attenuated, as you can see, because the closed loop now is still working, because now, due to the sampling, we're going to have uh, one kilohertz here, and this one kilohertz now is being compared to the DC and being attenuated, so it's kind of uh, modulation on modulation, and, and as a result, eventually, we're going to have a lower frequency. However, due to this double modulation, you might say, we have some other frequencies, some other frequency involved. This is in the basement, this is in the low frequency range, okay? And also you can notice that this process produces a lot of noise here uh, as compared to the open loop because of this uh, extra modulation of the disturbance. Now if um, I run it at 10 kilohertz, this is now again 10 kilohertz uh, signal, then of course will be the same thing. However, due to the fact that we are at a higher frequency, it's apparently, I don't know exactly what is the bandwidth of this uh, feedback uh, loop, but apparently we are at the edge of it, so the attenuation is not as large as it was before. So this is the open loop we see the 10 kilohertz as it is. But here, it's already attenuated, not as much as before. Again, we're going to see here a lot of noise generated from this double modulation aliasing on top of the aliasing. Now, if I add, however, 110 kilohertz as a, a noise here, as the input, and of course here also input, with the same um, switching frequency, we see the 10 kilohertz. This is the difference between the 110 and the 98 kilohertz, it's about 10 kilohertz. And here, again, the attenuation is not that high. We see it here, we see it here, and here we see extra noise here uh, due to the um, intermodulation or 
extra modulation that we have here. There is again a, some attenuation, but not as large because we are already at uh, 10 kilohertz. Now, what about the case that we have many uh, signals here? I've added here quite a number of uh, uh, generators here, 101, 125, 290, that's a high frequency. Same thing goes for the open loop section. And in this case, again, in the open loop, we see quite a bit of disturbance. We see a lot of uh, signal here. There's all this intermodulation between these old signals. And of course, here we see the sampling uh, uh, frequency. While in the case of the closed loop, this is the closed loop, most of it is uh, attenuated due to the feedback of the system. This is a linear scale, so we don't see it very nice. Uh, I mean, we don't see a very small signal. We don't see it here as compared to the case here, which I'm showing you here in a uh, dB scale. And of course, you see here a very large range. We see just the top here. So this is just the linear scale. So what are the conclusions here? Well, aliasing and frequency folding uh, prevails in analog control PWM system, not just in, it's not of concern only to uh, digital or discrete control, but also in analog um, control system. Now the uh, folding signal are attenuated by the feedback, uh, so that the feedback is actually attenuated some of these disturbance. So in many actual um, system or practical system, the effect uh, of the aliasing uh, could be small, but in some cases, perhaps it could be uh, of a larger extent. It also been shown that if you have a number of system in parallel uh, working together at the output, then this could actually enhance uh, this disturbance uh, to do the uh, aliasing. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.